Hey guys, I've got a Husqvarna lawn tractor here. It's a white TH-180. It's got a V-twin Kohler engine and the problem with this tractor is it does start but when you go to throttle up it dies. Now even if I have it on the choke and I go to throttle up it won't do that. What I'm going to do now is start it up just so that you can see the actual symptoms for yourself. So usually that would be related to a carb fuel issue. So at this point here, I'm going to remove the hood and I'm going to take the carburetor cover off so we can see what's going on. Now to get the hood off your lawn tractor, all you need to do is disconnect the wiring harness for the lights. And it's usually going to be a connector like this, which connects to the engine harness, which is right up top here. And I'm going to remove the hood for easier accessibility. And I'm going to start by removing the air filter cover here. I'll get the air filter off as well. And just as I took the cover off, I can see what is probably the problem here. I can see a wire that is cut right through and that's probably caused by rodents, mice getting in there. So I'm kind of glad it was pretty quick here. What I'm going to do now is take off the two 10 millimeter nuts holding this cover here on the carb. And here's a better view here with a flashlight. You can see other wires are damaged. And I can see where this wire used to be connected over there. So the best thing to do at this point here is just to remove the plastic cover on the engine. And I'll remove the two 10 millimeter bolts over here. Actually, there's one on this side, one on this side over here. And now the seven millimeter bolts on this cover here need to be removed. And now on this Kohler engine, you need to go around and remove all the 8mm bolts that hold the actual shroud on the engine. So there's going to be quite a few. They're all around. Just look for them. I'm also going to take off the two 10mm bolts that hold the fuel pump on the shroud here as well. So here's a better look at it. Now you can see that the main wire that goes to the carburetor solenoid's been chewed. This other white wire that goes to the coils is chewed as well. So it only looks like two wires have been chewed. And this is definitely going to cause a problem having the red wire cut right in half like that. And the reason for that is because it's connected to the solenoid. And if there's no power going to this solenoid, it kind of acts as a valve that closes the jet inside the carburetor. It will definitely limit or restrict heavily the amount of fuel that can go through. And there's no way that this tractor will run if this solenoid is not connected to 12 volt power. And you can even see it's been chewed on the bottom part. So I'll have to tape this up over here. Right here it's a butt connector so I'm just going to replace this with the wire and another butt connector. Now a telltale sign that the wire's damaged or that the solenoid doesn't work is that when you go to start your machine or you just turn the key on, you will not hear the solenoid click. So I'm going to turn the key on and obviously you won't hear anything. And I'll turn it back on once the wire's fixed and you will hear the clicking noise that I'm talking about. Now I'm going to use some electrical tape to fix up the white wire here. And a tip here guys is make sure you use good electrical tape like the 3M. It sticks a lot better than the cheap stuff. And then what you want to do is put a nice thick layer where it's been chewed a little bit. The wire's in good condition underneath. That's why I'm just putting electrical tape here today. And I'll need to prep this wire here, so I'm just going to pull it out of that tie strap. And now with these nice wire strippers, I'm going to strip a bit of the insulation off the wire.
Now to fix the wire coming from the solenoid, I'm just putting a nice thick piece of shrink tubing. Since I'm doing this around a carburetor, I'm just going to use a heat gun to shrink it. The shrink tubing should shrink about half its size. Sometimes you do need to take a break if the heat gun's causing too much heat. Now this is quite hot, so don't touch it with your hands. Now I'm going to let this cool off while I fix the other wire on top. So what I've got here now is some shrink tubing and a female butt connector. I'm going to put the shrink tubing on the wire first, then the butt connector. Now what I'm going to do with a pair of pliers like this is crimp the butt connector to the wire. Here's the model of the pliers I'm using. You can get these on eBay or Amazon quite cheap. And I'm going to use the middle setting here. As you can see, it makes a nice crimp. I do, however, like to solder my wires and connectors, but today I won't. I'm going to put the shrink tubing here on the connector. I'm going to shrink it. It will also seal the end here and also help to keep the butt connector on the wire indefinitely. I'm just going to let it cool for a few minutes. And I'm just going to zip tie the wire here to the manifold. And all that's left to do is connect this wire back. And make sure it's nice and tight in there. You don't want the vibrations to disconnect these two connectors here. And as an extra layer of protection, I'm just going to put a piece of electrical tape. It's going to connect both connectors nice and tightly. And there we go. This will never come off again. And now you'll notice when I turn the key on, you're going to hear that solenoid click, which is what you want to hear. That means that it's opening up and letting the fuel go through. I'm going to turn the key on and just listen for that faint click. And here it is again. And I can hear it quite well. Now that I've got the wires fixed, what I've done just for now is put the two 10 millimeter nuts to hold the carburetor tight. I'm going to start up the engine the way it is just to make sure there are no other problems before I put the shroud back on. So I'll put the choke on again. Throttle. So that seems really good to me, it runs really well now. And if you're going to start it up like this, make sure that you have the oil filler tube securely in place. I made the mistake of starting it without it being bolted here, it did pop out a little bit. So I had to cut the camera and put it back on. But otherwise everything looks good and now I can put the shroud back on. And I'm going to install the air filter bracket. Now the air filter and the cover.
and this other shroud here. And now the last item to be installed is the hood. And don't forget to connect the wiring harness for your lights. And let's give this another start with the hood back on and everything installed. So if your equipment won't start guys or doesn't run well like this one, always check the fuel system, the spark and the compression. And also you can check for wires that have been chewed by rodents like in this case. Thanks again for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and have yourselves a great day.